Hey guys, so it's December 23rd and in typical fashion I'm working on Christmas gifts at the last minute and you're going to see this video unfortunately after Christmas so you won't be able to use the same idea for a Christmas gift but hopefully you'll be able to apply the same technique to make gifts for birthdays, Mother's Day, whatever. Um, so anyways, the project I'm working on for these last minute Christmas gifts are some personalized travel bags. And you may be able to still find these bags at Michael's um, on clearance now at this point because they were part of a holiday collection. But they're just plain travel bags that have two zipper compartments and the front is just black. So I'm going to be applying um, different names to the front for my diff different family members in Cricut Gold Iron-On Vinyl or Heat Transfer Vinyl. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to select my text tool here. Click on my mat and I'm going to type the name. And in this case, I'm working on my husband's grandmother's bag and her name is Estelle. So I'll go ahead and type her name in. And I've already decided on the font I want to use. It automatically defaults to this Arial font, but I want it to be a script font. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my mouse over all of the letters so that they're highlighted in blue. And you can see that here. And I'm going to go to the font style menu and change this. And I think the font I want to use is called Dancing something. Dancing script. So here you can see the name has changed into this cursive or script font. And I'm going to grab this handle on the bottom right hand corner to make it larger. And before I do anything else, I'm going to zoom in just so if you're new to working with names or welding, you can see exactly what I'm referring to when I say weld. Each of these letters has an overlap into the letter next to it. And you can see it here. If you don't weld these letters together, what's going to end up happening is they're going to cut exactly the way you see it. So although it looks like it's one word, it's going to cut as different letters and the letters are going to cut into each other. So what I'm going to have to do is weld this together. So I'm going to zoom back out. And the easiest way to weld in this situation is to simply right click on your word and then go to the word weld. And you see it just welds together instantly. So I'm going to zoom back out. Like I said, I know the space I'm working with is approximately 4 by 12. So I'm going to make this name pretty big. So that's probably as big as I can make it without it being huge on the front of the bag. Now, if you want to conserve your vinyl, what you can do is draw boxes around each image. Um, so you can get more out of the scraps on the side. I'm not going to do that because typically what ends up happening is I don't use the scraps to the left or the right. But if you want to see what that actually would look like, you would click on this box here and just drag this shape around. So this way it cuts out in a straight line and you can save this scrap for something else. I'm going to go ahead and delete this just to save the life of my blade because, like I said, I never use these scraps. I say I'm going to and I just don't. Um, but anyways, you can see I have the name written here and it looks fine the way it is, but because I'm going to be cutting this out of heat transfer material, I have to mirror the image. So I have it selected here and if I click on the top right hand corner, there is a menu that says replicate and you would think replicate means that you're going to have more copies, which we are, but the replicate also has the mirror functions and it has mirror left and mirror right. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just click mirror right because I have space and you're going to see it just flips around another copy so that it's backwards. And now this one I can delete. I don't need this one anymore. And this is the one I'm going to cut out. So that way the glue is on the back so I can iron it on to uh, my travel bag. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the cut settings menu. And there is an option for commonly used materials for Silhouette brand vinyl. There's also one I believe for iron on material, but since I'm not using a Silhouette branded product, I'm actually using the Cricut iron on material because it's, it's it was easily available. I got it at Michael's. I'm not even sure if Silhouette makes a gold version of this. Um, but anyways, since I'm using a non-branded, um, non-Silhouette branded vinyl, I'm not going to be able to use the presets. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's vinyl 
and it's going to tell me to put my blade on a setting of one. I already know a setting of one with the gold glitter does not work. So I'm going to go ahead and, and change physically my blade to a five. So I'm not going to mess with anything here. I'm just going to change the actual blade in the machine to a five because I know that works. Uh, the other thing too, before I send this to Silhouette is usually with vinyl, you kiss cut and you do not use a cutting mat, but with this gold iron on material, it's better if you do use a cutting mat and you are better off using a brand new ones because this material is so thick that it's going to want to roll up. So you need the full sticking power of a brand new mat. Also the the Cricut vinyl has a transfer side and a, and a glue side. So essentially one side is dull and one side is shiny. You're going to put it on the mat shiny side down. And that's how it's going to cut out. So I'm going to go ahead and click send to silhouette and get this all cut out and ready to go on my project. Although it doesn't look like anything cut, the name indeed did cut out clearly. And you'll see it a little bit better once I rip away the majority of this vinyl just by using my hand. And this process is known as weeding. You probably should be a little more gentle than I was um, if you decide to tackle this project in your weeding because I inadvertently ripped the tail off the E but I decided to just roll with it. And for the insides of the letters, I'm using my silhouette hook tool to pull out all the extra small pieces. Although there's quite a bit of residual glitter left on the clear sheet, none of that is going to transfer to the project. And the paper is slightly tacky, or the backer sheet is slightly tacky, so it stays in place while you move things around. And here I'm going to place some towels on my work surface just to protect it from the heat. And I'm going to place a towel on top of the actual name to protect the liner and use my iron on the highest heat setting to transfer the image from the backer sheet onto the actual tote bag. The amount of time that you'll actually need to iron will vary based off how hot your iron actually gets. Mine on the highest heat setting actually takes a few seconds in each area, but you'll know that your image has transferred when you can lift the backer sheet without any of the lettering pulling up away from the fabric. Here you can see that the foil transferred cleanly onto the bag, but I was left with some odd wrinkles. So I'm going to spray the bag with a little bit of water and those wrinkles are going to fall out naturally on their own. You could also cover the design with a towel and iron over it again if you would prefer. So here's a look at the final product, as well as a quick peek at another bag I made using the same technique. As always guys, thanks for watching.